It's just more proof that Federation leaders are weaklings. They're giving away our colonies and allowing the Klingons to massacre our colonists. That theory doesn't hold water, Frank. Klingon colonies along the neutral zone are being attacked, too. Those are just rumors started by the Klingons to cover their tracks. Cadet Milan, assemble your crew and report to the simulator immediately. Let's go. Thank goodness. I can't stand that self-righteous creep. I know. Hi, crew. Hey. David. Hey, has anyone seen Stark lately? No. Yeah, David. He had a project to work on in the lab. He said he made us in the simulator. Good. So, is everyone ready to take on the Klingons again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that will be acceptable. That reminds me, um, I told him I'd meet him in the lab. I'll see you guys later. Right. Uh, Robin, would you help me with those subspace equations? Sure, Jenna. It's pretty simple once you know the overall. Magia, before we go, I think we need to discuss your conduct in the simulator lately. You don't have to be concerned. I am fully in control now. That's what I'm afraid of. What? Look, as long as you hide your feelings, by staying this calm on the outside, you're a threat to the crew. How can you say that? Because it's true. You're bringing us down in the simulator. That's insane! I've done nothing to endanger our standings. Yes, you have. Going into a mission when you're too busy suppressing your rage to do your job is affecting all of our standings in the academy. Are you trying to start a fight? Face it, McGee, you're screwing up and it's affecting all of us. <laughs> David, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. I really have been bottling things up, I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'm... Fine. I'll shape up, I swear it. Yeah, I know you will. But uh, in the future, try to blow up a little bit now and again, you know, so uh, I don't have to make a trip to sick bay. And uh, in the meantime, let's just pretend this little thing didn't happen, okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so everything's straightened out now? Oh, I think you're going to see a big improvement in the team score. Absolutely. You know, I wish I'd have known hitting you would bring up our scores. It would have saved me a lot of study time. <laughs> <laughs> you two sit down. Let me get you a drink. I've heard some cadets say the Klingons are unthinking animals. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not true. Animals don't run star empires. The Klingons may appear brutal, but they also have a deeply rooted code of honor. Study it, understand it. You may prevent the loss of thousands of lives. Let's look at a recent skirmish between the Klingons and the USS Senate. Cadet's log supplemental. The lecture was long but riveting, but it was after the lecture when Captain Kirk took questions that the best part occurred. Yes. You have a question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a great honor, sir. Yeah. What's your question? Sir, the Klingons have never fully abided by the Organian Peace Treaty. Why don't we put an end to them once and for all? Nice and simple. Well, if you're here, Looking for simple solutions, you're in the wrong place, cadet. And I think we'd take it personally if they felt the same way about us. David, ask him how he gets away with violating the regs. Captain Kirk. Yes, cadet. Sir, 
Do you believe in always following the Starfleet regulations to the letter, or reinterpreting them as you see the need to do so? Are there some regs you're thinking of violating, Cadet? No, sir. Regulations are for perfect situations. It's up to you to make them fit the imperfect ones. That's why we don't send computers into space. We go with them. We temper them with instinct and improvisation. That's what we do best. The Academy can teach you how to apply the regulations to regular moments, but life in space is made up of thousands of hours of boredom offset by abject moments of terror. When that time hits, it'll be you, not regulations, dealing with it. That's a regulation chair, Cadet. Why don't you use it? 